chapter 10 and 11 final exam questions section 10.1 page 610 problem number 13 the graph of each equation is a parabola. Find the vertex of the parabola, then graph it. So x equals y minus 2 squared plus 3. Uh, let me subtract 3 from both sides of my equation so I can put this into a standard form. Uh, x minus 3 equals y minus 2 squared. Okay. And so I have that uh, this is uh, in the form and so um, where of course HK is the vertex and if A is greater than zero then it will go to the right, open to the right, and if a is less than zero, it opens to the left, and if a in absolute value is greater than one, it is uh, thin, and if a is less than one in absolute value, Uh, it is fat. Okay, so let's do this. So in this case, uh, the center will be at the point 3, 2. The vertex will be at the point 3, 2. And uh, since A in this case is 1, it opens to the right, opens up to the right. And uh, it has the, since A and absolute value is equal to 1, it actually has the same shape as the graph of y equal x squared. So, uh, let me uh, graph this. So the vertex is at 3, 2. So it's 1, 2. Okay, so just putting tick marks here as best I can. Okay, so this vertex is at 3, 2, and it opens up. It's not too bad. So this is a graph of x equals y minus 2 squared plus 3. Okay, uh, let's do problem number 15. y equals negative 3 x minus 1 squared plus 5. Uh, let me subtract 5 from both sides of my equation. And so y minus 5 equals negative 3 x minus 1 squared. So again, uh, this is in standard form. 
And so my vertex is at the point 1, 5. A is equal to negative 3, which is less than 0. So that means that it's going to open up downwards. A in absolute value is equal to 3, which is greater than 1. So that means it's going to be uh, relatively thin as compared to the graph of y equal x squared. It'll be thinner than the graph of y equal x squared. So let me sketch this. So let me put my tick marks as best I can. So after I've done the tick marks, I can now sketch the graph. So the center is at 1, 5. The vertex is at 1, 5. Opens up and th uh, down, sorry, and thin. So let's see. It's going to be relatively thin here. So this is the graph of uh, y equals negative 3 x minus 1 squared plus 5. Okay, so let me do problem number 27. <clears throat> the graph of each equation is a circle. Find the center and radius and then graph the circle. So I have here x minus 5 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 1. So it's in uh, the standard form for the uh, graph of a equation of a, of a circle. So this is a circle. Oh, I guess I should have at least said that uh, these were parabolas even though we know they're parabolas, but let me write this. So that's a parabola, parabola, and this was a circle. Okay, so <clears throat> the center is at HK and the radius is R. And so in this case, the center is at 5, negative 2, and the radius is 1. So let me try to graph this if I can. Let's put all my tick marks. Okay, so let's see. The center is at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. So that's the center. Oh, this is going to be really tiny now. I should have made it. That's going to be too tiny. Okay, let, let's try. Uh, the, the radius is only 1. So let me do this slightly differently. Let's do this again. 
one, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, let's try those tick marks. So the center is at five. One, two, three, four, five, two. Five, negative two. And the radius is one. So it should look something like that. And so this is the equation of uh, x, the graph of x minus 5 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 1. So the radius here is 1. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if it's not too bad. And the uh, center is at 5, negative 2. Okay. Uh, let me do problem number 35. x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 8y minus 2 equals 0. Uh, so let me add 2 to both sides of my equation. Uh, let me um, group all the x's all the y's together. And so this is one and, f and let's complete the square. And so um, negative four divided by two is a negative two. Negative two squared is four. So let me add four to both sides of my equation. Negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. Squared is 16. So let me add 16 to both sides of my equation. And so I have completed the square. x minus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared equals 22. So in this case, the center... So again, this is in the form <clears throat> x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So this is a circle. The center of the circle is 2, 4, and the radius is the square root of 22. <clears throat> now the square root of 22, well, square root of 25 is 5. <clears throat> square root of 16 is 4. So it's pretty close to 5. Um, so this is going to be a good size circle. Okay, so let's get a graph of this. So, put our tick marks as best I can. Okay, so two. Four is the center, and the radius is radical 22. Okay, so that's going to be about here. About that. one, two, three, four. About there. Okay, and 22. 
here. Four. Okay. And one, two, three, four. Right there ish. Okay, so let's try to draw the graph of this. If I can. Good enough. This <laughs> is good enough to be, I guess. Okay, so uh, the center, so the radius, is the square root of 22. And the center here is at the point 2, 4. And this is the graph of, oh, um, I guess I'll just put it here, x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 8y minus 2 equals 0. So it's that circle. Hey, good is well, it's a little oblong, but it's close enough. Okay, uh, so that's uh, section 10.1. Let's do section 10.2. <coughs> Page 617. Problem number 15. X <coughs> plus 1 squared over 36. Y minus 2 squared over 49. And so um, this is going to be an ellipse. And the standard form for ellipse is as follows. And so the uh, center of that ellipse is HK. Um, oh, so this gets the graph of each equation. Okay. And so, let's us, uh, and of course, this will be an ellipse. So in this case, <coughs> the center, oh, maybe I should say what the uh, vertices are. So the vertices will be located at H plus or minus A, K, and at H, K plus or minus B. Okay, so uh, let's do it in this case. The center is negative 1, positive 2. A, square root of 36 is 6. B, square root of 49 is 7. <coughs> and so um, let's sketch a graph of this. That's going to be really big. Let's actually make it. Let's see. Let me put my tick marks. Okay. So negative 1, positive 2. Okay, oops. Why did I put it on the wrong side? What am I doing? Okay, negative 1, positive 2. And the A is 6, so I go 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so that'll give me my uh, minor axis, 
uh, because in this case uh, 6 is less than 7 so that's my uh, the, the radius of my uh, minor axis let's go 7 Ooh, 1 2 3 4 5 oh darn Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there are the major and minor axes. Let's try to draw the ellipse. Darn, going through those points. Okay, there. <clears throat> so the center is at negative 1, 2. Vertex is, so I'm going to be uh, adding 6, so 5, 2. Going to be subtracting 6, negative 7, 2. Going to be uh, subtracting 7, negative 1, negative 5. Going to be adding 7. So negative 1, uh, 9. And so this is the equation of, this is the graph of the equation. x plus 1 squared over 36. y minus 2 squared over 49 equaling 1. Let me do problem number 25. Oops. Let me do problem 25. 16. Y squared minus X squared equals 16. So this is going to be a <coughs> hyperbola. But let's put this into standard form. Let's divide every term here by 16. And so this is y squared over 1 minus x squared over 16 equals 1. So this is, uh, well, the graph of hyperbola. And the standard form for the graph of hyperbola are centered at the origin. y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals 1. <coughs> and so, in this case, uh, the vertices are going to be <coughs> 0. plus or minus b, and uh, the um, asymptotes will be y equals plus or minus b over ax. Okay, so let's uh, draw this. Okay, so in this case, the um, center is at the origin. A is 4, B is 1, and so let's try to graph this, and I, I think I'll draw the bounding rectangle. I will draw the bounding rectangle. And so, let's put our check marks. Well, if I do four, one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, it's one, two, three. 
Let's put all of our tick marks. They're not quite evenly spaced, but obviously this is not even a straight line, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so uh, the center is at the origin, and we go four in the X, one, two, three, four in the X, one, two, three, four in the X, one in the Y, and so let's draw the bounding rectangle. Maybe I'll do that in oranges. That's my bounding rectangle. Here are the diagonals of my bounding rectangle. <coughs> okay. Here are my vertices. And let's draw a hyperbolus. Okay, so this is the center. Is at the origin. The vertex is at uh, zero. Uh, this is one and zero, negative one. Uh, my asymptote is. Uh, <coughs> it's going to be four, so it's one fourth. So y equals x over four, and this is y equal negative x over four. So the rise is um, one and the run is four. And uh, th this is the, the graph of uh, the equation, uh, 16y squared. Oops. Sixteen y squared minus x squared equals sixteen. Okay, so that finishes off chapter ten. Let's go on to chapter eleven. <coughs> Section eleven point one page six hundred thirty nine. 15. A sub n equals negative 1 to the n, n squared. Write the first five terms of each sequence whose general term is given. So A sub 1, just replacing, oops, n by 1, negative 1 times 1, negative 1, a sub 2, negative 1 squared times 2 squared, 4, A sub 3, negative 1 cubed, 3 squared, negative 9. Uh, we want how many first five terms? A sub 4. 4 squared equals uh, 1 times 16, 16, a sub 5, negative 1 to the fifth, 5 squared, negative 1 times 25, it's negative 25. And so my sequence is negative 1, 4, negative 9, 16, negative 25, etc. Let me do problem number 31. A sub n equals negative 1 to the n over n plus 6. Find the indicated term for each sequence whose general term is given. 
So I want to figure out a sub 19. Okay, so let's just plug in for n, 19, negative 1 to the 19 over 19 plus 6. Negative 1 to the 19 is negative 1. 19 plus 6 is 25. And that is your answer. Uh, let me do section 11.2. Uh, Uh, this is on page 646. Problem number 19. Find the indicated term for each sequence. So the sequence, so find the fifth term of the geometric sequence. 2 negative 10, 50, and this will be geometric sequence, and I want to find the fifth term. Okay, well, in a geometric sequence, um, to go from one term to the next, you just uh, keep multiplying always by the same uh, constant, the uh, common ratio. And so, um, 2 times something must equal negative 10. Well, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Times negative 5 is 50. Times negative 5, negative 250. Times negative 5 is a positive uh, 1,250. And so... The fifth term is 1,250, and that's your answer. One, two, three, four, five. That's the fifth term. Okay. Uh, let me do problem number 23. <clears throat> if the second term of an arithmetic progression is negative 1, and the fourth term is 5, find the ninth term, problem 23, the ninth term. And this is arithmetic sequence. Well, the general form, the general term for arithmetic sequence is just a1 plus n minus 1d. So let's uh, figure that out. So first off, um, <clears throat> let's figure out what a1 and, n, and d are. Well, I know that when n is 2, I have that. Let's plug in 2 into this equation. And so if I plug in for n 2 here, I get a sub 2 is equal to a1 plus n 2 minus 1d. But a sub 2 is negative 1. Don't know a1. 2 minus 1 is just 2. So I have this. Maybe I'll call it r, equation r. Next, uh, let's see, when n is 4, plug it into this equation. Well, a sub 4 is equal to a1 plus n 4 minus 1d. And so, well, a sub 4 I know is equal to 5, so that will give me a new equation, s. 5 equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1, 3 minus 1, uh, 4 minus 1, which is 3d. So uh, let's try to solve this. So I have, um, maybe I'll subtract r. So I have 
If I multiply by negative 1, I have 1 equals negative a1 minus d. So let's add these. And so I have 6 is equal to uh, the a1s cancel. 3d minus d is 2d. Divide both sides of my equation by 2. And so d is equal to 3. But if d is 3, well, let's plug into r. And figure out what a1 is. So <clears throat> if I plug into r, I have negative 1 equals a1 plus 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. And so that says that a1 is equal to negative 4. And so I have that the general term, well, uh, let's figure out uh, a sub 9. So I let's figure out what a9 is. a9 is equal to... a1 plus n minus 1d, but I know what a1 is. a1 is negative 4. I know what d is. d is 3. And so, negative 4 plus 9 minus 1 is 8 times 3. Negative 4 plus... 8 times 3 is 24, minus 4 is 20. And so the ninth term is 20. Um, let me do, so that was 23. Okay, so that finishes off section 11.3, uh, let's, 11.2. Uh, let me go on to section 11.3. On page... 651. Uh, let me do problem number 13. S sum i equal 3 to 5 of i, i plus 3. Evaluate. So let's evaluate this. So let me substitute for i 3. Let's substitute for I4. Let's substitute for I5. And so let's uh, evaluate this. 3 plus 3 is 6. 4 plus 3 is 7. 5 plus 3 is 8. So, 3 times 6, 18. 4 times 7, 28. 5 times 8, 40. And so, uh, 18 plus 28 is 46, plus 40 is 86. Okay, uh, let me do, uh, so that finishes off section 11.3. Let's go on to section 11.4, page 658, problem number 5. Find the sum of the first six terms of an arithmetic uh, sequence. So I have here 3, 6, 9. Okay, so I want to figure out that uh, sum. Uh, use a partial sum of the given arithmetic or geometric sequence. Okay, so I have that uh, if this is a uh, arithmetic series, then the uh, sum of the first n terms 
is just equal to n over 2, 2a1 plus n minus 1d. That's the formula for the sum of the first n terms of our arithmetic series. And so we want to find the sum of the first uh, six terms. So I want to find the sum of the first six terms. So that's 6 over 2 times 2. Uh, A1 is the uh, very first term in my uh, series. Well, the very first term in the sequence is 3 times, well, n is 6. d, the common difference. So the common difference in this uh, arithmetic, in this particular arithmetic sequence from which the arithmetic series was formed is going to be, well, I keep adding 3. So the common difference is 3. And so I have that S sub 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. And so 3 times uh, 5 times 3 is 15. 6 plus uh, 15 is 21, times 3 is 63. So the sum of the first six terms is 63. Let me do problem number uh, 7. Find the f uh, sum of the first four terms of a uh, geometric sequence. So I have the following uh, geometric sequence, 2, 2 over 5, 2 over 25, and I want to form from this a geometric series. Okay, and so this is a geometric series. So the um, formula for the sum of the uh, first n terms of a geometric series is just uh, a sub 1 times the quantity 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Of course, here we're always assuming r is not equal to 1. <coughs> In this case, I want to figure out the sum of, this is problem 7, uh, the sum of the first four terms. Okay, so let's do that. So S sub 4 is equal to A1. Well, A1 is the first term, which is 2. 1 minus R. R is the common ratio. So what do I multiply 2 to get 2 over 5? Well, I divide by 5, so 1 fifth. 2 times uh, 2 fifths times 1 fifth is 2 over 25. Good, so it's 1 fifth. And I want to do this for the first uh, four terms. Okay, so this is equal to two. Um, <clears throat> actually, maybe I should. Uh, so this is one over six twenty-five. One minus one over five. And so, <clears throat> let me multiply, I guess, and divide by 625. Okay, so this is equal to 2. So 625 minus 1 over 625 minus 125 so 624 over 500 so I can divide so that's equal to 250 125, 312, so 312 over 125.
Hmm. Really, 500, 250. Huh. Okay. And that's your answer. Uh, let me do problem number 21. Two-thirds minus one-third plus one-six minus etc. Uh, find the uh, sum of the terms uh, for of each infinite geometric sequence. Okay, so we have here the... Oh, I didn't need that extra page. And so <coughs> I know that for a infinite geometric sequence, an infinite geometric series, So we have this infinite geometric sequence from which we form infinite geometric series. I have that the sum is equal to uh, A1 over 1 minus R if R in absolute value is less than 1 and it diverges if R is absolute value. is greater than or equal to 1. And so, uh, in this case, R, well, A1 is equal to 2 thirds. That's the first term. R, the common ratio, well, in order to um, get negative 1 third, I have to multiply 2 thirds by a negative 1 half. Negative one third times negative one half is positive one six. Good. So therefore, um, R in absolute value is less than one. So therefore, it does converge. And so the infinite geometric series will just have the sum of A1. over r minus uh, 1 minus r and so the first term is two-thirds and I'm subtracting a negative one-half so that's plus one-half so let's multiply and divide by six six divided by three is two times two is four 6 times 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so if I add up all these terms forever, darn. So if I add up all these terms forever, I get that their sum is 4 over 9. And that is your answer. And so that finishes off um, this portion. The uh, Exam questions from chapters 10 and 11.